a warm welcome to you all uh, uh, for this international international lecture series 2021 uh, first event today we have with us uh, uh, professor dr nazrul islam sir he is from uh, nub uh, northern university bangladesh uh, he is the speaker for the day a warm welcome to all of you uh, all the faculty members we have our uh, respected dean sir uh, professor dr shia shailajan he is going to be the chair for the session uh, before we start the session i like to give a brief introduction about our uh, speaker today uh, professor dr nazrul islam uh, is a professor of management at international business he is currently serving as the pro vice chancellor at northern university bangladesh prior to completing his phd in international business at asian institute of technology thailand he received his bachelor's honors and master's degrees in management from university of dhaka he began his career in academia in 1991 at khulna university in the discipline of business administration in 2004 he joined brac university as associate professor of management where he served as the coordinator of evening programs in 2005 he joined north south university's school of business as an associate professor while working at northern northern he also served as an executive editor of asian management forum 2007 jointly organized by north south university and association of management development institutions in south asia mdsa in 2007 he joined east west university as a professor where he also served as a dean of the faculty of business and social studies coordinator of mba and executive mba programs and the chief editor of the journal of business and social studies since 2008 professor islam has served as a business school dean at various universities like east west university eastern university and canadian university of bangladesh professor islam has supervised three mphil students and is currently supervising six phd scholars and four mphil students at bangladesh university of professionals professor islam has published 62 research articles in international refereed journals that were abstracted and indexed by scopus abdc epsco host proquest etc professor islam has also published 29 research papers in local refereed journals and attended more than 20 international conferences held in india nepal maldives hong kong uh, south korea malaysia thailand singapore usa and australia professor islam reviewed ifi business school of india for its accreditation just last year presently professor islam is serving as an editorial board member for a number of national and international journals refereed journals like international journal of management and business british journal of economics management and trade etc professor islam has also worked as a convener of the organizing committee of three international conferences organized by department of finance university of dhaka southeast university and uttara university in collaboration with mdsa and global business and management forum Professor Islam authored and co-authored three books: Entrepreneurship Development, Modern Insurance, Global Technological Change Impact on Textile and Garment Workers, etc. Professor Islam examined more than 15 PhD dissertations of different public and private universities of Malaysia, India, Nepal, and Bangladesh as an external adjudicator. Professor Islam achieved. Bangladesh Education Leadership Award in the year 2017 and Education Leadership Award 2018 in the category of best professor 
in business administration by CMO Asia. We are really privileged, sir, for having you as our speaker today. And with this, I request our Dean, Professor C.S. Shailajan, sir, to kindly say a few words before we start. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sabati. Uh, very good evening, uh, Professor Basrul Islam and other distinguished uh, professors. Uh, as a part of our internationalized session, we give a lot of focus and emphasis on inviting eminent academicians from abroad. <coughs> we used to have in the past. Now, instead of physically inviting, visiting our, our campus, we have an opportunity to invite and interact with our faculty members by eminent academicians. I'm so happy that today we have a renowned professor, this Professor Islam. He visited our campus last year for as part of SACS accreditation. And we got our SACS re-accredited three times. I'm so happy that uh, so this time you have you are visiting virtually. Thank you very much. So uh, the part of this uh, uh, this is a part of international lecture series which we have started in the academic year 2021. Uh, then uh, this topic, the topic of emotional intelligence in the classroom teaching, is more er, more important than ever. As, as, as all of you know very well. I hope all faculty members and later the students, they will benefit a lot from attending your lecture. As you, uh, for your knowledge, we have started our academic session of 21-22 yesterday. So our MBA program has started and we are looking for, forward to your, to your session. Uh, th thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Professor Islam. I'd like to request uh, Professor Dr. Nazrul Islam, sir, to kindly address all the people who are present here. It will be our really nice experience to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shomodip Chakraborty. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor J. Mahenda Reddy, IGFI Foundation for Higher Education, Hyderabad, India, Respected Dean Academics, Professor Dr. C. S. Shailazan, IBS Hyderabad, Dr. Shomodip Chakraborty, Associate Professor and Area Coordinator, Department of Operations and IT, IBS, distinguished colleagues and participants, good evening to all of you. It is really an honor and privilege for me to welcome you to this international webinar on emotional intelligence in classroom teaching, which has been organized by IBS Hyderabad. I wish to extend my deep appreciation to the ICFI Foundation for Higher Education mm -hmm. Authority for inviting me to share the thoughts of emotional yes, intelligence in classroom teaching with the esteemed faculty members of IBS Hyderabad. I want to particularly thank the Dean Academics, Professor Dr. Israel Islam Islam. for inviting me to this program. I am delighted to welcome all the distinguished colleagues and of management department and IFA Business School who are attending this lecture on emotional intelligence and classroom teaching. I also thank and welcome other participants, IBS Hyderabad, who will share knowledge and experience with the faculty members and ensure an outcome that, will, that is grounded in the concrete realities of increasing the effectiveness and teaching learning process at the tertiary level of education. Dear colleagues, no aspect of education has been more investigated than that of teaching effectiveness in the world. During the last 50 years, thousands of research studies have attacked the phenomena 
through teacher's personality and characteristics, teaching methods, students' understanding, and growth and classroom interactions with its many facets of social and emotional climate, group influence, leadership behavior, verbal behavior, and teaching techniques and strategies. Hence, effectiveness in teaching and classroom efficiency is an important aspect of every teacher. Without the efficiency and effectiveness of teaching, a teacher cannot make the class outcome-based and cannot be accepted by the learners and students. Therefore, for making classroom teaching effective, I think emotional intelligence is also another aspect that we should uh, understand and know and use when we teach in class. Dear uh, um, colleagues, my today's discussion topic is emotional intelligence in classroom teaching. What I will do, I will basically share my experience and I will invite your experience to share in this forum so that we can learn this very important aspect of teaching learning process. In my lecture, in fact, I am planning to cover some aspects of a good teacher. I will discuss the main purpose of teaching and I will focus on learning and domains of learning, cognitive domain, effective domain, psychomotor domain. I will little bit discuss concept of emotional intelligence and where is the place of emotional intelligence in learning. I will discuss the attributes of cognitive emotional intelligence in cognitive domain, teaching with emotional intelligence, application of emotional intelligence in classroom teaching, how to develop a higher sense of emotional intelligence and why is emotional intelligence important for faculty members at the tertiary level of education. Dear colleagues, you know, for being a perfect teacher, we need to have three things. Of course, subject expert is the first thing. Second thing is teaching and learning methods. And third is emotional intelligence, which is in fact neglected, not mass focused by us. So to our today's topic will be this neglected one, that means the emotional intelligence aspect of a teacher. Now, what are the signs of a good teacher? Good teachers must have the training. They should maintain the balance between lecturing and listening. They are, of course, leaders in the class. They must be able to engage their students in learning. Their students remain a top priority. They can give the sense of fairness to their students in evaluation. And of course, they let their passions through their lessons. And you know that the main purpose of teaching is to help or facilitate the learning process for the learners. And teaching should make learning better and faster. And we should facilitate this learning process through this teaching learning process. Now, what is learning? We know that learning is basically a relatively permanent change in behavior that results from experience. And the psychology of learning focuses on a range of topics related to how people learn and interact with their environments. Psychologist John B. Watson suggested that all behaviors are a result of the learning process and identified three major types of behavioral learning, such as classical conditioning, that is natural response, then operant conditioning, that is reinforcement, and behavioral learning, that is through observation and imitation of 
others. So learning has three uh, types of three domains. That means three types of learnings are occurred in classroom. Now let us see what are those three types of um, uh, learning occurs in classroom. We will recall, you know, that domains of learning, cognitive domain, that is thinking part, emotional development, that is feeling part, and behavioral development, that is the acting part. That means thinking, feeling, and doing, or acting. Now, if you look at the cognitive domain of learning, you will see that there are six areas identified by Benjamin Bloom, which is popularly known as Bloom's taxonomy. And all of you know what is Bloom's taxonomy. Just I am going to uh, uh, say a few words on this Bloom's taxonomy. In this taxonomy, there are a few uh, six uh, levels are identified, remembering to creative. Remembering means um, retrieving relevant knowledge from long-term memory, Understanding means determining the meaning of instructional messages, including oral, written, and graphic uh, communication. Intellectual abilities and skills are requ required. And then comes applying, that means carrying out or using a procedure in a given situation. Then analyzing, breaking material into its constituent parts and detecting how the parts relate to one another and to an overall structure or purpose. And then comes evaluating, making judgments based on criteria and standards, and creating, putting elements together to form a novel, coherent whole, or make an original product. Research shows that the first uh, three uh, should be more used at the primary and secondary level. That means remembering, understanding, and, uh, and applying. And the last four is to be focused more at the tertiary level of education in teaching learning process that is applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Now, if you look at the effective domain of learning, you will see that there are five levels of this domain, receiving, responding, valuing, organizing, and characterizing. And these all are concerned with the emotion of the learner. Receiving, for example, it is the lowest level of effective domain the awareness of feelings and emotions of the learners. Then comes responding, that means actively participating in the learning process, not only aware of his stimulus, but also react or respond to it. Then comes valuing, ability to see the worth of something and express it. Then comes organizing, putting together different values, information and ideas, then relate them to already beliefs to bring it into an inter internally consistent philosophy. And the last one is characterizing that is the highest level of effective domain. That means the act consistently according to internalized values. If we look at the psychomotor domain of learning, then you will see that there are four levels of this domain. Active mental attention of a physical event, that means the learner was a more experienced person. Then attempted copying of a physical behavior. At this level, learner is observed, learner observed, and learner is observed and given direction and feedback on performance by the uh, teacher. Trying a specific physical activity over and over. That means the skill is repeated over and over. And finally, fine tuning. That means the making minor adjustments in the physical activity in order to perfect it. The skill is perfected at this level. So these are three domains of uh, learning. So now we shall see where is the place of emotional intelligence in this in these domains of learning. Emotional intelligence is in the affective domain of learning. It is the ability to identify, evaluate, control, and express one's emotions. The benefits of having emotional intelligence include increased self-awareness, stress management, higher motivation, more empathy, and compassion for others. It covers five main areas, such as self-awareness, monitoring, self-motivation, empathy, and relationships or social skills. 
and it is of course important for good, good communication with others and is therefore a gateway to better learning, friendships, academic success and employment as well. Dear colleagues, now we shall just see uh, what is emotional intelligence. Aristotle says that anybody can become angry, that is easy. But to be angry with the right person and to the right degree and at the right time and for the right purpose and in the right way, that is not within everybody's power and is not easy. That means emotional intelligence. You, dear colleagues, you know that Daniel Goldman, who is the pioneer who popularized this term, emotional intelligence, he said that we are being judged by new yardstick, not just how smart we are or by our training and expertise, but also how well we handle ourselves and each other. Now, some important course of Daniel Goldman, he said that in a very real sense, we have two minds, one that thinks and one that feels. So this emotional intelligence is concerned with feeling. Emotional brain responds to an event more quickly than the thinking brain. Life is a comedy for those who think and a tragedy for those who feel. Feelings are self-justified with a set of perceptions and proofs all their own. Out of control emotions can make smart people stupid. People tend to become more emotional intelligence as they age and mature. IQ intelligent quotient is the strongest predictor of which field you can get into and hold a job in, whether you can be a, an accountant or lawyer or a nurse, or, for example, but Emotional intelligence can help you, help us to go to the top of the success ladder. So the emotional import, uh, intelligence is more important in success. Now, emotional intelligence, this idea appeared in psychology in 1960s. And first empirical study on emotional intelligence by Peter Salovey and John Meyer in early 1990s and originally conceived as a set of skills, abilities to understand own and other's emotions. Daniel Goldman that I mentioned made this concept popular in 1995 and heavily uh, applied at the, at, especially at the tertiary level of education. Emotional intelligence assists knowing one's internal states, preferences, so resources and intuitions. Goldman viewed emotional intelligence as a driver for leadership performance. That means emotional intelligence is also very important for effective leadership. Now, as I mentioned uh, that there are five attributes of emotional intelligence, self-awareness, self-regulation or management or monitoring, self-motivation, empathy and social skill. Now I will discuss these six attributes of emotional intelligence and these attributes are in the cognitive domain of learning. That has been identified by, uh, also uh, uh, discussed in Bloom's taxonomy, cognitive domain. So the first attribute of emotional is self-awareness. That means the ability to recognize and understand one's moods, motivations and abilities. Self-regulation is the ability to control one's impulses, the ability to think before you speak, react, and the ability to express yourself appropriately. Motivation, this is having an interest in learning and self-improvement. It is having the strength to keep going when there are obstacles in life. Empathy is a very important aspect of attribute of emotional intelligence. That means the ability to understand other people's emotions and reactions. The ability to put yourself in the other guy's shoes, but it is not easy. Empathy can only be achieved if self-awareness is achieved. And the sixth attribute of emotional intelligence identified by Daniel Goldman is social skills. That is the ability to pick up on jokes, customer service, maintaining friendships, relationships, and finding common ground with others. So these are six attributes of emotional intelligence. 
now we shall discuss little bit more in detail how this emotion and self awareness is connected as you know that emotions are complex psychological state that involves three distinct components subjective experience psychological response and behavioral or expressive response and life is an emotional experience so assessing it is very very important for everybody and research shows that there are more than 3000 words that describe emotions and in this among these 3000 words 1051 words describe positive emotions and 2086 describe negative emotions emotions are active signals has hidden messages and all emotions are a call for action Emotional self-awareness is the ability to understand your own emotions and their effects on your performance. And first and most significant step of becoming emotionally intelligent. Knowing thyself, recognizing own emotion, thoughts and values, and understand how it impacts us, our performance and impact others. You sense how others see you and so align your self image with a larger reality so high self awareness equals high self confidence now emotional emotion and self regulation your ability to control or redirect disruptive emotions or moods that's ability that ability is self regulation that assists managers to practice think before act Individuals with high self-regulation are considered trustworthy, work with integrity, and take up challenges comfortably. The emotional regulation disorder is often manifested by symptoms such as sudden and unexplained anger outbursts that get displaced to someone who did not cause any harm. So you are always responsible for how you act, no matter how you feel. Emotional self-motivation, self-motivation, that is a force that keeps pushing us to go on. It's our internal drive to achieve, produce, develop, and keep moving forward. And it includes our personal drive to improve and achieve commitment to our goals, initiative, or readiness to act or opportunity, on opportunities, and using self-control to channel emotions toward the achievement of goal. And it is a passion to work for reasons that go beyond money or status. Pursue goals with energy and persistence, optimism even in the face of failure, and hopeful and find something good. Now, emotion and, and empathy. Empathy is seeing with the eyes of another, listening with the ears of another, and feeling with the heart of another. Emotional empathy is when you quite literally feel the other person's emotions alongside them as if you had caught the emotions. Understanding the emotional perspective of other people, that is empathy. Now you know that there is a little difference between empathy and sympathy. Empathy, I, we already know that sympathy basically is feeling pity for others and empathy is understanding the feelings of another. For example, sympathy, I am sorry that happened to you. Empathy, I see your pain and I understand. Now, if you go a uh, little depth of empathy, then you will see that there are three types of empathy. Affective empathy, somatic empathy, and cognitive empathy. Affective empathy, the ability to understand another person's emotions and response and respond appropriately. And such emotional understanding may lead to someone feeling concerned for another person's well-being, or it may lead to feelings of personal distress. Somatic empathy involves having a sort of physical reaction in response to what someone else is experiencing. People sometimes physically experience what another person is feeling. When you see someone else feeling embarrassed, for example, you might start to blush or have an upset stomach. And the third one is the co cognitive empathy, involves being able to understand another person's mental state. 
and what they might be thinking in response to the situation. This is basically related to what psychologists refer to as theory of mind or thinking about what other people are thinking. Now, emotion and social skill, that means communication skills, collaboration and cooperation, building rapport, etc. It is concerned with being able to interact with well with others, ability to manage relationships and build trust with others, ability to find common ground and build rapport, ability to resolve conflict, expertise in leading others and effective in leading change. It allows people to build meaningful relationships with other people and develop a stronger understanding of themselves and others. Now, we have seen the learning, domains of learning, emotional intelligence, types of, there are attributes of emotional intelligence. Now we shall see how this emotional intelligence can be applied in classroom teaching. Dear colleagues, you know that in classroom management, there are some issues concerned. So as a teacher is the authority in class and teacher is the leader in class. And this leader is legitimate leadership authority, reward authority, forceive authority sometimes, and of course, expert authority teacher has in classroom teaching. In classroom teaching, there are some rules and procedures everybody has to follow, faculty and, and learners. Motivation of students are also very important. If the students are not motivated, then that classroom will be an ineffective classroom class. Physical environment of the classroom is another aspect. Time management is an issue. Lesson management by providing clear objectives with itness. That means teachers ability to be aware of what is happening in all parts of the classroom, overlapping during lesson presentation and group focus, etc. So these are basically some issues which are concerned with classroom management when it is in classroom. Now, <laughs> Teaching with self-awareness. You know, students or learners learn more from who you are than what you teach. That means what are your primary concerns in classroom? You must aware. Are you constantly involved in power struggles with some students is an issue. Do you desire for good relationships with all your students? Are you stressed out and so on? So these all are the issues we must aware before teaching or in classroom teaching. Now one can teach by knowing his own style, playing to his strengths. Each and every faculty has got some strengths. So play with the strengths, knowing his driver, being aware of verbal and non-verbal communication. There are five questions to increase teacher self-awareness. These are from literature, such as, am I taking proactive steps to identify and resolve my own emotional triggers? Is a big question to me when I teach. Am I paying attention to what I need to pay attention to? Am I using effective strategies to reduce burnout and nurture my own mental health? Am I using an appropriate sense of humor to build relationships, diffuse conflict, engage learners, and manage my own stress? And do I regularly acknowledge significant ways I and others are making a difference in the lives of students? So these are some questions can be asked to oneself in classroom teaching to improve the self-awareness. Teaching with self-regulations, building relationship to the students, building trust between teacher and student, establishing a structure in the classroom, and clear oral and written communication are considered important in this case. Benefits of emotional intelligence include better relationships with the students, higher levels of student engagement, and more trusting relationships if the teacher has got higher level of set regulations. However, students' home lives and limited training for emotional can create barriers in this regard. 
teaching with self motivation is the force that drives you to do the things people can be motivated by many things maybe both internal and external such as desire to do something love of someone or need for money or something else usually it is the result of several factors daniel goleman in his seminal books on emotion and has identified four elements that make up motivation which are concerned with self motivation personal drive to achieve that means the desire to improve or to meet certain standards is one thing commitments to personal or organizational goals initiative who is defined as readiness to act on opportunities and optimism the ability to keep going and pursue goals in the face of setbacks this is also known as resilience now the last one is teaching with empathy that means who is an empathetic teacher like your students are watching you even when you think they are not put an attitude of empathy in the classroom by showing compassion positive regard and understanding for all with whom you interact even it is said that continue this behavior in the halls cafeteria and even with how you interact with other teachers outside the classroom try to communicate empathy an empathetic teacher uses teachable moments in class to explain how one student or even a character in a story might be feeling during a certain situation this will get your students thinking about things from the perspectives of others emphasis shared values and common interests rather than highlighting how your learners are different help them to recognize things they may have in common with one another this includes things like hobbies and interests or even just a shared desire to do good in class empathetic teacher offers a safe environment to discuss differences he gives students ample opportunity to respectfully discuss their differences within the context of classroom discussions allows the students to recognize that having differences is not bad but it leads them toward a healthy respect for the opinions and perspectives of others use self disclosure when appropriate share stories or examples about your own life to connect to students on a more personal level an empathetic teacher is after all a human one create opportunities for collaboration another issue which is concerned with empathetic teacher whether through group projects or teams during games allow students to work together and force bonds through their motivation to win or lose in an activity now teaching with social skills social intelligence you know the ability to successfully build relationships with others navigate social environments goldman daniel goldman identified nine ways you can improve your social intelligence first one is the proto conversion that means social awareness and social facility know how to have smooth and effective interactions with others your social triggers is another one think of a time when you felt drained and defeated after an interaction your secure base this is a place a ritual or activity that helps us process emotions and occurrences broken bonds that means lack of empathy positively infectious when someone smiles at us of course it's hard not to smile back adapt to adapt sometimes you should let yourself adapt their emotions put yourself exactly where they are that is also needed sometimes beware the dark tribe dark tribe of people are the egoistic personality the machiavellian as a personality and the psychopath or anti social personality mind blind another important aspect of social skill can you usually guess what someone is about to say are you good at pretending uh, predicting people's behavior 
do you think you are intuitive if you answered yes to these questions you probably have high mindset and high social awareness and a people prescription that means goldman daniel goldman's prescription for a long healthy happy life is positive relationships now the based on this literal discussions we met so far we can say that emotional intelligence is important in classroom teaching because teaching requires constant interactions with the students and hence a continuous interplay of emotions and it is now recognized that emotions serve as a powerful vehicle for enhancing or inhibiting learning negative emotions can reduce working memory the memory system used for holding and manipulating information while various mental tasks are carried out and effective and successful teachers are mainly those who can handle this negative feelings in a healthy way or convert this negative feelings into positive way now the who is a good teacher or who is an effective teacher research shows that good teaching is one fourth who is related to preparation and three fourth is related to theater classroom great teachers emphasize with kids respect them and believe that each one has something special that can be built up on now a study show that those individuals with high sense of emotional intelligence tend to become successful so how to develop a higher sense of emotional intelligence here are some tips becoming emotionally literal that means label your feelings rather than people or situations say i feel instead of i know distinguish between thoughts and feelings take more responsibility for your feelings use your feelings to help make decisions use feelings to set and achieve goals feel energized not angry validate other people's feelings very important use feelings to help show respect for others don't advise command control criticize or judge or lecture to others avoid people who invalidate you so dear colleagues it is not the smartest people who are the most successful or the most fulfilled in life you probably know people who were academically brilliant and now unsuccessful at work or in their personal relationships their intellectual ability or intelligent quotient that means iq is not enough on its own to achieve success in their lives higher level of iq can help become help someone to get into college or to start a job good job but it is not it is the eq that means emotional quotient or emotional intelligence that helps someone to manage his or her stresses and emotions when he or she faces problems at work therefore both iq and eq or emotional intelligence are important for being effective at work in classroom iq and eq exist in tandem and are most effective when they build up one another so the success is the function of iq and eq not only iq so finally if our emotional abilities are not in hand if we do not have self awareness if we are not able to manage our distressing emotions if we cannot have empathy and have effective relationships then no matter how smart we are we are not going to get very far distinguished participants and colleagues you are all leaders classroom leaders at least mentors advisors motivators in the teaching learning process and i am fully confident that your knowledge experience and expertise will provide important insights on understanding and managing emotions of the learners i would like to conclude 
by again thanking the IBS Hyderabad Authority who has honored me, in particular, Professor J. Mahendra Reddy, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Ikpai Foundation for Higher Education, and Professor Dr. C. Shailazan, Academic Dean of IBS, and Professor Dr. Shomudeep Chakraborty, Head of the Department of Operations and IT, by inviting me for this webinar on emotional intelligence in classroom teaching. Thank you all. Now, if you have any questions, we can share. Um, thank you, sir. Um, it was really a very engrossing uh, session with you. We have a couple of questions which are asked in the chat box. Uh, there's a question which mentions that. Uh, shall I tell you, sir, the question? Yes, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, as a group, do teachers have high or low EI? As a group, do teachers have high or low EI? As a group, teachers, you yes. know, emotional intelligence is uh, perceived from the individual point of view, not from group point of view. This is from individual point of view. We are talking emotional intelligence, attributes of emotional intelligence from individual perspective, an individual's attribute, not a group. But the teacher has uh, 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 if the teacher has got this knowledge, if the teacher can understand the individual students in class and their emotional intelligence level or emotions, then he can manage better his class. Sir, uh, I think they have added that it is, they're asking teachers in general. They have just now added on the chat box. They're asking for teachers in general. Might not be as a group, as an individual in general. Yeah, I, I said, uh, yeah, it is, um, you know, emotional interest of group, I, I, I don't have much idea because this is from the individual point of view. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If anybody else has got any questions, uh, please feel free to ask it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we have one question from uh, Professor Srinivas Achari. Uh, he asked that, Will uh, people throw some? Oh, oh, will you please throw some light on the difference between feelings and thought from the classroom point of view? Feelings and thought. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Feeling is <laughs> exactly from the emotion. It is exactly connected with emotion, and thought is not only connected with emotion. It is also connected with knowledge. That is the cognitive part cognitive domain, knowledge, thinking part. So thought is first, feeling is next. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So we have one question from uh, uh, Dr. Surjit Kumar Kaur. Uh, he has written that emotional intelligence and emotional quotient EQ, how to differentiate and which one is effective uh, given the emotional turmoil almost everyone is facing due to COVID. IQ so, and EQ? Yes, I no e, e, EQ and EI. Yeah, these are the, the there is not much difference between these two EI or in other words it is called EQ. But there are differences between IQ and EQ. For example, regarding IQ, say uh, for example, somebody is at the age of 10 years and he is in class five but he understands the books and the curriculum of class eight. That means uh, uh, he understands the, uh, his mental uh, or, uh, standard is at the uh, age of 13. That means eight, five, six, seven, eight. So if you um, calculate this emotional intelligence of this guy, then it will be 130, uh, 13 divided by 10 multiplied by 100. That means, the, sorry, IQ. This person's IQ will be 130. If the student who is in class five and having 10 years age, and it is the usual age to study at class five, but that student understands the curriculum books and everything is understanding level, mental um, uh, uh, growth and level is at the class eight. 
six, seven, eight, that means 13 years equal, then his IQ is 130, 130, 130. And you know, average IQ of the human being of the world is 85 to 115. Even in our class, we see the students, there are students who, who are uh, below 100 IQ, 85. There are students in our class who have IQ level higher than 100. That means uh, 115, 85 to 115. So there are some students who, uh, for them, we need to repeat because their IQ level is below 100. But there are students who will feel bored when we repeat, who are more than 100. So this is IQ level. But you know, this research shows that the success it depends on not only on IQ, it depends on EQ, emotional quotient or emotional intelligence. IQ can help someone to get a job, to start uh, something good, but to become successful, he or she needs self-awareness, needs self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skill. Otherwise, he or she will not be able to go to the top of the success ladder. It's very difficult. That has been identified and through research by Daniel Goldman in 1995. Yes, Thank, you, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, there was a second part to the question which was asking that whether EI and EQ, uh, I mean, which one is more effective within the current COVID scenario where people are in a very turmoil situation? <laughs> <laughs> you know, EQ is needed everywhere. EI or EQ is needed everywhere. You know, uh, e uh, emotional intelligence is basically concerned with the uh, uh, knowing the feelings of others, emotions of others. Wow. If we understand that, yes, uh, if I do not wear mask, then other people might be affected by me. But can I think from his position, how he is thinking if I am not wearing the mask? So in this COVID situation, emotional intelligence is highly important. We must consider this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, we have a question uh, which mentions that can we assume uh, that higher the EI, better is the teacher? Is it true? Higher the EI, greater. Yeah, yeah. EI is uh, concerned with success. Yes. Okay. EI is, is connected, positively correlated with success or effectiveness of teaching, if a teacher. So a teacher with higher EI maybe can... Yeah, yeah. That is why this topic is a popular topic and people are discussing this topic. Thank you, sir. So we have... Just, you know, we raised from the literature, you see. Well, there are many issues who, who we do not address in our class. We just, one way, uh, traffic, we just tell them and give them order and we do not try to understand the from their position. We don't try to understand from the student's position. That is why problems are creating. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, uh, can we take a couple of more questions? Yes, we have yes. a couple of more questions, sir. Thank you. Sir, we have a question from... Uh, don't ask me all the questions. There are experts here, I know. <laughs> well, just, just a couple of more. That's it, two questions. I first. just wanted to share this concept with these colleagues. And well, I also want to hear from these um, distinguished colleagues of ICFI Business School. Right, sir. Right, sir. So the, actually, we can take it as a discussion itself. Uh, it is asked by Professor Radhamon. Uh, Professor Radhamon has asked that recently there is an emerging consciousness on social intelligence uh, more than emotional intelligence among corporates. Uh, what is your uh, take on that? So, so emotional, can you please repeat? Yes. There is an emerging consciousness yes. on social intelligence yes. more than emotional intelligence among corporates. What do you say? I mean, what is your take on that? You know, I have no research findings, but in social intelligence is a part of emotional intelligence. It is focused and mentioned by Goldman and proved in research that it is a part of, it is an attribute or component of emotional intelligence. And uh, if you ask me, then I think, uh, uh, this one, you know, basically two parts, No, your side and other side. In your side, there are three components, self-awareness, self-monitoring and regulation and, and empathy and, uh, 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 and self-motivation and other side, empathy and social skill. So basically two sides and equally important, both the sides. 
as i i understand myself i also understand others so social side social skill intelligence is in the other side thank you sir uh, sir i think there is one question uh, from uh, professor ved um, uh, i think uh, professor ved you may ask it directly i think that will be better uh, for uh, nazrul islam sir to understand yes sir yes sir i what i uh, thank you very much sir very relevant topic so what i wanted to ask you was as teachers are we too much obsessed with preparation and we are less concerned about what happens in the classroom you mentioned 25% preparation 75% theater do we over emphasize the preparation and under emphasize the theater that is the question i wanted to ask you yeah that's a good question in fact we over emphasize on preparation we over emphasize but we don't care about the theater we don't care about the classroom environment we don't care about our students we don't care about their understanding level we don't care about their emotional intelligence level or iq level we don't care in fact we we rather we are the experts we believe and we feel that what i we know others do not know so in one way just one way we uh, we uh, keep on saying keep on saying and instructing and saying you are very correct sir very correct so and would you also agree that this pro this problem is more acute for teachers because nobody tells them directly there is a problem whereas in other environments people give you feedback that you know you need to improve but in the academic world there is no feedback we think we are great because students cannot tell us anything directly so the absence of feedback does it hamper the development of emotion you know uh, as as faculty we have basically dual duty not only give the grades the students are hanker after grade they look for grade first they don't care about much learning but teacher has got dual duty grade and also make sure that the students are learning so to uh, occur learning teacher has the duty to engage them you to engage them in classroom is to engage them in learning process and how to do that and emotional if, if the teacher can manage the emotional aspects of the class him his emotional aspects and the emotional aspects of of his students then perhaps he will be he or she will be able to engage the students better and there will be better learning environment in the class thank you sir um, so we have uh, one last just discussion topic i will not say as a question uh professor jaypal has said where do you put ei in modern education in compared to ancient gurukul education system uh that is a great question <laughs> the professor you know in uh, guru shishyo you know guru shishyo education system you know everything was transferred from guru to a uh, shishyo in a course of time and uh, you know you can say uh, the the issue we are talking today is emotional intelligence that is successfully transferred to shishyo to follower in course of time of course that is the that is the best system but in modern era it is very difficult to have uh followers so many people make them followers in this modern are very difficult but i think uh emotional intelligence aspect was highly addressed in that system that is why that that education system was learning system was highly effective so is that sir is that because in the gurukul system you had a few students per teacher but today we are trying to handle hundreds of students simultaneously is that what is the reason perhaps perhaps yes you are very correct perhaps that's the reason so many and that is why you will see that the good universities they have class size specifically say 20 students 15 students not more than that they have the restrictions in class size but what i understand is that in the old system of education yes, there was no need for the teacher to understand the student as such whatever the guru says student has to oblige there is no other go in those days what i understand the student has to understand the teacher rather than teacher understanding the student but as of now in the present system of education 
even though the teacher has got a lot of intelligence to communicate the same to make the students understand i think he has to toil a lot using emotional intelligence that's what my opinion i don't know whether no, you agree or disagree yes sir we can debate <laughs> no no problem but you know uh, in guru shishya system students do not leave she should uh, do not leave the guru but here people will leave in modern system they will not care so the system and uh, what should i say the motivation of the learner here is also very important motivation think about the motivation of shishya of a guru yes sir i agree i agree with you <laughs> motivation of a is a student exactly in class yes sir i fully agree with you yeah thank you sir. So, sir what you are saying is maybe superficially we are friendly with the student but the ancient system that relationship was so deep very that, specific uh, even if the teacher punished the student they never took it in the wrong way yes place. yes yeah yes sir yes sir sir you are correctly pointed out yes sir thank you sir yes sir but at, at this point i mean i feel like teaching in and asking one question which is actually raised by professor shiva prasad but drona drona from the maharashtra bharat uh -huh. drona drona charya mm -hmm. don't you feel he showed a more of bit more of partiality in his uh, ei or what you say towards arjuna rather than the other other people to make him the best shishya so so in that context equitable di uh, division or equitable distribution of ei it can be raised as a question right sir at that ancient gurugul system which is somewhat absent in the current context you know i can i can give you uh, a quote of socrates socrates said that strong minds discuss idea average mind minds discuss event and poor minds discuss people so you see there are three types of minds of human beings poor mind or never as mind and strong mind now in the population there are three types of people here now the people who are at the level of a strong minds they will focus more on ideal level they will remain superficial abstract level but the, but the people who have weak mind or poor mind they will focus on hitching and talking each other and identifying the flaws of others they will do it frequently and ever as mind people will try to discuss about the events not even better better than poor mind so you see the philosophers they their, their course these all are basically connected with this mind thing what we are talking mindset and emotion and intelligence and 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 other things like this all the people you see so Thank this you. is a vast area you know when in this era we we must give importance on this aspect to be more perfect to be to teach in classroom and to be efficient in 360 degree level efficiency to have 360 degree level efficiency not only 90 degree or 180 degree thank you sir thank you i think uh, uh, we don't have any further questions yet i mean i like to take the opportunity on behalf of all the present faculty members all the heads of the departments and uh, ibs all the supporting staff and all the people to really thank you uh, for such a insightful topic sir myself not being uh, linked with uh, so much of this department also i could understand i could appreciate and i could relate with our understandings i mean thanks a lot sir uh, for giving us this insightful uh, last one hour for uh, understanding in the current context of the pandemic where people are so much worried so much confused so much tensed i think your uh, insights which you shared the points and facts which you shared will really help us and reach our understanding uh on behalf of ibs and ik pai business school i would like to thank you for giving us time to present uh, your thoughts and 
be a part of our international lecture series uh thank you sir i would like you. to request uh, dean sir to say a final few words to sir yes, thank you sir for submitting uh thank you professor uh, rasul isna it was an extremely important topic at uh, at, uh, at this point of time at covid time and post covid time also uh, i understand as uh, dr samadhi was telling i do not have any idea about not not much idea about emotional intelligence uh, the concepts you discussed but it was very informative and it's very relevant uh the six attributes you have mentioned whenever as a faculty when we go to classroom we have to take into we have to focus on each and every attributes of that six attributes you which you have mentioned whether it is a empathy or self uh, self awareness or motivation we cannot we do not know which one we have to focus i think we have to give equal importance to all six attributes so it was it was extremely very important extremely important very informative uh, thank you very much for sharing your uh, insights and we will be keeping in touch with you uh, thank you for sharing your uh, valuable time thank you very much sir so i would like to thank from uh, on behalf of ips hyderabad all the distinguished faculty members and all uh, area heads so we will be keeping in touch with you uh, we hope you will be uh, now we will be happy to share uh, some more thoughts in near future thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you too for listening and and uh, having a good time with you all the faculty members i am really honored thank you sir for giving me the chance thank you please discuss this very important issue thank you i like to thank all the present uh, faculty members and who attended uh, even some of the research scholars attended really many thanks to all of you uh, it was really uh, enjoyable one hour with you sir we look forward to us many for Uh, such cases where we will get a chance to hear you in various other forums and we look forward for a longer collaboration deeper collaboration with your institutes thank you yes sir thank you thank you okay thank you so can we say good night <laughs> good night good night and okay sir okay good night okay good night sir thank, thank you. you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir